Hello and welcome to another episode of Invalid Entry. My name is James Taylor um, and today what we're going to do is we're going to do some remote packet capture using Wireshark. So Wireshark is an application which captures packets um, from a hardware device such as a network card or a virtual network card which I'm going to demo today. Sometimes you want to diagnose network interface problems um, and really you want to do that because uh, you've got an application which you didn't write you can't easily diagnose the um, the, the stream of data, you want to look at what's actually going on um, between that application and other application, or you might be having network issues or weird routing issues, or you may be finding you're trying to connect and you're getting firewall issues. So Wireshark or Packet Captures allows you to diagnose these things really, really powerfully. The problem is it only really works on the device you're on. There are other packet capture tools, console packet capture, but given the amount of packets that come through, something like Wireshark is super powerful at being interactive and filtering and, and gluing together packets to see the individual streams. Personally, as a professional item, I don't like running packet capture systems on networks unless I've informed people on the network that I'm doing it. Uh, so in this case, I have informed, I'm gonna be running packet capture here, I'm gonna be running packet capture on a virtual network, so I won't see any information or stuff that's on this household network, my home network. But I have told my wife, I am gonna be running packet capture this afternoon. Um, she actually doesn't mind because she's using VPN, so I won't be able to see anything that she's doing on the internet. But I do think there's a, an element of professionalism that you should tell uh, people that you are about to be capturing packets on the network. Uh, because it is a little bit of an invasion of privacy unless they're doing things right. Um, so I think that it's important that you're professional when you're doing things like that. You, people get upset if they find out afterwards, even if you weren't looking at stuff they're doing. People, people have an expectation of privacy. So I think it's very important professionally that you say, hey, we're going to be doing that. Anyway, so what I've got here is I've got some pies. I've got one Raspberry Pi there, and I've got another one just off camera up here. Now this is left hand, and this is right hand because they're powering the left and the right hand screens. Um, and uh, they're also very important to my network. So I've run services on left hand, and right hand actually acts as my DMZ uh, for various things, like it has my web servers and things on, whereas the left hand is doing some more internal things and has no outside connectivity. So I control my access to these two things. Um, and I'm in the middle of a project of making a virtual network between these two things via special things in a different video. But I wanted to show how I could diagnose issues on this Pi without running Wireshark on this screen. And I only run these screens when I'm making videos or I'm in posh conference calls to show off. This is a bit of a flex. So usually these screens are, are turned off and this is completely headless. Uh, I do that because they're obviously slightly behind me. I actually can see this screen. So sometimes when I'm doing stage monitoring, I use this screen. But this screen is behind me. So I generally have that turned off uh, to save electricity. Uh, and that's important, especially in, in saving the environment. Turn things off you're not using, especially the screens. The Pies don't use much power at all, so they're left running all the time. Anyway, remote packet capture. There's three steps you have to do for remote packet capture. Uh, the first thing we'll do, and I'm going to share my screen now. So this is on my Mac, uh, but I'm going to be capturing packets on this computer up here. So on my Mac, I'm not gone into the computers yet at all. On the computer, one of the things you have to do is you have to install um, um, a, a service called um, um, T TCP dump or a, a program called TCP dump. So uh, I use color coded things. So this is my computer, uh, the remote computer up there. So I'm going to do sudo apt get install TCP dump. Now it's already installed, so it's going to be really cool. Uh, if you're not using a Debian or Ubuntu system, it might be yum. Uh, just check whatever your local package is. And um, once that's installed, that's fine. I don't need to worry too much about this. I will come back to that screen. Uh, as a quick note, I always color code. I, I On my Mac, I can quickly change my colors. But I always have remote servers. I change the color off. So if it's a live production server, I use a red background. If it's a sandbox or testing server, I use like a green. For my internal ones, I use blue. So I know the difference. When, I'm, when I click on a terminal, I know where that computer is. And I, I'm very strict with my own operational computers and doing that. Anyway, so the first thing we want to do is we need to make a FIFO file, okay? We do that by saying muk FIFO. Um, and I have put mine in slash temp because I'm going to delete it afterwards. So slash temp um, uh, pack cap. It doesn't even matter what the call, file's called. Uh, it, it just makes that file. And what that is, is it's a uh, a, a file in file out um, uh, file, so a first in first out file. So you can shove stuff in there. It's actually like a named pipe is actually the technical name for it. 
Uh, so I can stuff, shove stuff in there and can put it out. But as, as far as you connect to it, it acts like a stream. So it's it's like a hard drive backed up bike queue is, is one way of thinking about it. Then we're going with Wireshark. So Wireshark uh, dash K dash I um, for slash temp slash pack cap. And I use type complete there uh, to get the name of that in. So I'm going to run that. And that's Wireshark running, okay? So Wireshark is now going to try and capture on that. Uh, if, you, if, if you go wrong here, by the way, this might error. When you go ca back to capture, you will have to um, uh, specify you want to use this as a device. And I'll show that in a moment. So this is running up here. I'm just going to keep it up there. Now, we haven't actually put anything into that pipe yet. So this is the clever bit. You go to SSH uh, into the uh, remote server. So that for me, that's pi at left hand at local. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to run a command. Now, you might want to run as root. So if you're logging into a firewall or something, you might do root at left hand local. SSH often doesn't allow root logins. So mine doesn't allow root logins, so I'm going to do pi. Now, because I'm running pi and because I'm, I'm running home stuff and there's only never me logging in with SSH keys, um, I am actually able to do sudo without a password. So I'm going to do sudo tcp dump dash s dot dash u dash n dash w dash dash i now this next line is very important you have to put the name of the device you want to capture on so on mine if i do ifconfig my device is actually called test turn naught now there are other devices in here um such as uh so i'm in a screen session which is why this is chopped a bit short uh i've got docker eth low so i could do eth naught or loop back but i'm going to do test turn naught here Test turn naught. Um, to get that list, by the way, was I uh, was just ifconfig uh, or ip dash ipa. Does that show you? Yeah, that shows you as well. WLAN naught and so on. You've got all these different network connectors you can connect to. Uh, not. Uh, you can also put things like not port twenty two, so you don't capture your SSH. Um, but I don't worry about that. I'm just going to do that. <coughs> Pardon me. The reason you would want to do not port twenty two, by the way. Ugh. If you're going to capture the network device that you're SSHing via, then you'll get all the packets of it transferring the packets to you. So every packet then causes another packet, which causes another packet, and you just flood your thing with packets. So that not port 22 is super important. You probably want to leave it on just in case you mess it up. You don't want to flood your network with packets about packets. Um, and then close the quotes, so it's going to run that command. But I want to pipe the output of that. I don't want it in this shell. I don't want to see it. I want it to go into slash temp slash um, pack cap. Um, and if you want to do multiple computers, you would just make a different FIFO. Don't don't intermix your FIFO. Okay. So I run that. It's going to log on and it's and it's doing it. Okay. So this is now capturing packets in and out because that's my virtual network. Not, not lots happening. So if I just nip over here and ping one nine two but one six eight point one point. I don't know. 74, 78, start pinging like that, you'll see those pings are appearing on that remote server. And and that's it. That is how you do packet capture remotely. You would now filter this or you wanted to do or look at the data or whatever you want to do, you can interact because these packets are now stored locally on your computer's memory so as a as of some kind of data, local data in memory store. And you can filter and query and, and glue things back together and everything you wanted to do. And that's it. It's all done back. So if you kill it, if you kill that connection, then the, the then the capture obviously stop. Um, and at the end of this all, you just close your applications down. Uh, and remember to delete your pack cap, your temporary file at the end. And that's it, cleaned up. Very simple, very easy to use. Um, you do need to have TCP dump installed. So if you run this command, it says no such command TCP dump. You also have to run it as root. If you don't run it as root... Um, then you'll get permission error because you you can't capture packets unless you're root, um, and that's it. That is that is it. Oh, if if you're on a router, you're like you're connecting to a Linux-based router, that's where you may have troubles installing TCP dump because there may not be space. It's a higher-end system. There may be space. Um, there's really not a lot else to it. Uh, so if you have any comments or or feedback. Please put it in the description below or in the comments below. I will put all these commands in the description below and put a link to a blog which, which has some screenshots as well. And that's it. It's a nice short video. 
and I really hope that uh, you all enjoyed it. So if you found it helpful, please hit like. And uh, yeah, thank you very much.